Hello, welcome to a quick start video for the RTS camera system in Unreal Engine 5. If you're using Unreal Engine 4, then you should watch a different video in the link in the description below. So this system uses the Enhance Input plugin for Unreal Engine 5. So we'll need to enable that before you kind of go any further. So it's very, very easy. We're just going to go Settings and then Plugins. I'm going to go Search for Enhance Input. You want to tick that on and then restart the editor if it prompts you to. And then once you're back in Unreal, we're going to go Settings, Project Settings, scroll down to Input, which is, there it is. Uh, and then scroll down slightly and you want this Default Classes section. And what we're doing here is we're just telling Unreal to use the Enhance Input plugin and not the default system. So change the default player input class to the Enhanced player input and the default input component class to the Enhanced input component. Uh, if you are familiar with this plugin, or oh, sorry, this asset pack from before, uh, you may know that we used to use the asset action, the asset, the action and axis mappings. Sorry, um, we don't use them anymore. So if you have them and you want to entirely switch over to this system, you can just delete them. If you were midway through a project, obviously don't do that. Stick with the kind of. You shouldn't really have downloaded this if you're midway through a project, so it should be fine. Um, but yeah, we won't need those for this. So next thing we can do, we can go to our RTS camera. So if you've not done this already, go to the marketplace and merge it into your project and you'll end up with this RTS camera pack here. So we can go over to demo and we can open up this overview map and that's gonna open up kind of a good demo sandbox map. So we can go ahead and hit play and all the controls are gonna work out of the box because enhanced input um, works very nicely for this. So we can use WSAD to move around. We can hold down the middle mouse wheel uh, to do like a free tilt around. We can hold down the right mouse button to do a drag style move. Uh, we can roll the middle mouse wheel to zoom in and out. We can hold Q and E to do linear rotates around. Uh, and we can do kind of a selection based system. And this is kind of just a loose implementation of kind of a selection system. So we're gonna click on these selectable buildings and you can see we have an automatic camera jump system that moves you smoothly over to them. It also fires off a is selected event inside the building. So if you wanted to like trigger a UI to pop up at that point, uh, you could do that very easily. Uh, we don't have a box selection or a marquee selection in this plugin, uh, that's not implemented. Um, up here we've got an animated object. If we select, select this, you can see the camera jumps to it. It also parents to it and it affects the zoom. So you don't have to affect the zoom. It's there as an option if you wanted it to like zoom in close to a unit when it's selected. Uh, it's entirely optional and it's there if you want it. Um, so one thing we have uh, in this thing, one kind of a common problem, is the camera will attempt to try and go through objects by default. Um, and it is based on the spring arm component. So there is a kind of a built-in system for avoiding collisions in spring arm, but I don't think it's very suitable for this. So I've implemented a custom solution called the Repulsor. And essentially, if your camera intersects an object, it will just attempt to angle it upwards to get it out of the way. So if we bring our camera down here, and we go ahead and just drive our camera right through this box, it'll angle us up and clean me out of the way so we never really look inside and see all those internal normals that you know the average user shouldn't be seeing. So if you see that happening, that's what that is. If you load into a level and your camera just shoots straight up to 90 degrees, uh, that means your camera is intersecting something and you may need to look into your collisions uh, in your level. So I'm gonna bring this back down now. Um, it, the camera is designed to follow the terrain. So if you find there's like, you know, if you're doing natural terrain like slopes and things, then it will naturally follow it. Um, there's no great solution for if it falls off a cliff. So if you do fall off a cliff, the camera will just naturally fade back down to the ground very gently. Um, and if you're holding the controls, it will carry on kind of falling very, very gently uh, because there's a lot of air control. And you can tweak all of those settings. They're just basically linked on the character movement component. So you can tweak those as you want. Uh, and I'll show you those in a second. If we press P on the keyboard, that's gonna open up some debug uh, prints and things. Uh, mainly it just lets us see kind of where our origin sphere is. So if we move around, uh, the red sphere is our kind of actual actor origin. And this little line here is showing the camera lag that's going on to kind of smooth out the current system. And if we fall off a cliff, you can see that's our trace going down to try and bring us back down to the ground. I'm just gonna press P to hide that. We've also got some fixed rotation angles up here on the UI. These are just a proof of concept to show how you could add them if you wanted them. Uh, you definitely want to design a better UI than this one. Uh, this system also fully sports controllers. So let me go ahead and turn my gamepad on. I'm just using an Xbox controller here. 
Uh, and now if I use the right thumbstick, we can move around. You can see the reticle has automatically adjusted itself to a different type of control scheme. Um, and the system has also changed the mappings entirely over to the um, gamepad based mapping system. So it means you can have different scalings on different things. If you want your right stick to move faster, but you don't want it to move faster when you hold down the middle mouse wheel, that's one of the really big strengths of the enhanced input component system that we can now tweak on a kind of a per platform basis uh, those inputs. And you can allow the user to tweak those as well. So you could expose out a controller Sensi uh, sensitivity slider and you could separately have a mouse sensitivity slider and there'll be two separate options you can expose really really easily thanks to the enhanced input com advanced input system so that's one of the main reasons we've switched it um, otherwise it all works much the same we can do the left and right triggers to zoom in and out uh, we can move around we can mouse over these boxes and you can see the cursor turns blue when we hit them with a trace I can hit the A button or the gamepad face button bottom to do the same snap system and it also has the same repulsive technology as the other one. So we just angle up and down. Um, it does also support uh, touch. Uh, however, I can't demo that to you in this video. So um, we'll look into a way of demoing that in the future. I'm going to just press uh, escape or shift escape to get out of the play mode now. Um, as far as finding the assets, we've got this RTS camera pack and we've got our blueprints, inputs, resources and widgets. So blueprints contains kind of the core systems. Um, an RTS camera here, this is the actual pawn that we play. This contains 99% of all the code for this project. This one next to it, the RTS camera old input style, this one uses the input mapping system that was in Unreal 4. This is not currently used for any reason, however it is there should you need it, um, just in case you want to refer back to it or whatever reason it's there. Uh, and if we open up our RTS camera, let's put it on the other screen, basically we've got all the blueprint in this guy here. It looks like quite a bit, but it's um, relatively not too bad. There's kind of quite a bit of little maths and things going on um, and everything's interpolated and smoothed, which is why it kind of gets extra lengthy. If you want to tweak the overall feel of how the character moves, you want to just use the character movement component as normal. So just select this guy and then in especially look for the ones that have got these reset arrows because these are the ones that I've already tweaked. So this gives you a good sense of which numbers you should play with beyond uh, anything else, but these numbers I've already tweaked the ones you might want to tweak further Especially things like the air control and braking deceleration those affect quite a lot of things especially when you're kind of falling off cliffs um, Things like the step height and the floor angle those are affecting the ability to like walk up and down buildings and meshes um, We want those very high for this sort of system to make it all fluid, but you can play with those as you wish um, If we go down to the options variable here, we've got a bunch of stuff that you can turn on and off so things like the overall zoom speed multipliers, minimum zoom, maximum zoom, um, whether you want to lock the mouse to the viewport, uh, inverting certain things, do you want edge scrolling on or off, uh, which we didn't cover, but the system does have edge scrolling. Um, you'll need to set up the HUD for that. Um, some different bits and pieces here as far as options. Um, things like the interpenetration check, if you decide you don't want those systems, you can just go ahead and use these booleans to turn them off. There's one there for um, falling through floor and there's another one here for the um, vertical pulse which is the thing that angles you so if you don't want that just go ahead and untick this box and then it's gone so easy enough to tweak these systems the way we do our kind of selection system is all via that we have a trace that runs and does different traces depending on what platform you're on uh, and then we have a select which simply fires from your input action uh, and then it will fire these on selected events so very quickly we'll just show you in a building example we just have a simple system for um, touch-based input and we have a system for this um, interface-based call. And then we simply call this kind of jump to actor or jump to location. Um, and you can kind of explore this and definitely build upon this. And down the bottom over here, we've got this on at camera arrived, on camera left, which is a great way to trigger UIs uh, and other effects like that because you don't want to trigger them until the camera has actually arrived on the building, not while it's animating through the level. So these are incredibly useful, these two. Um, if we go over to our input system, if you're not familiar with the enhanced input, I highly recommend you have a little poke around in these. These are essentially our actual input actions. These are the things that get mapped in Blueprint. Um, our configs, sorry, our mappings first. These are where they map those actions to a button. 
So we have our keyboard and mouse, we have our gamepad, and we have these debug controls, which is just one, it's just the P key. Uh, but we have it as a separate thing because it's true on either system. So whether you're using gamepad or keyboard and mouse, the debug controls are always available. So if we open up keyboard and mouse, you can just see we've got our different moves and we've got them linked to our different buttons. Uh, we have secondary buttons so that they can be remapped should you want to support that feature. Uh, and these are all set up for player mapping, like secondary interactions, secondary mappings. So you still need to build all the UIs for that. I've only done the half of the job because uh, your UI is going to be unique to your game. I can't build that for you. Um, and then over in our configs, this is what actually gets set um, when you change input mapping. So our keyboard and mouse, for example, we also map our keyboard and mouse system and our debug camera controls. In our gamepad, we map our gamepad and our debug camera controls, hence why it's separate. We can map those no matter what. Um, and then lastly, down the bottom, we have widgets, and we just got a very simple uh, widget HUD. There's not much to be said about that. So that's it, really. There's plenty um, to play with, and I think it's a good starting point for any RTS camera system. If you have any issues, uh, go ahead and join the Discord. Have a little look through um, some of the notes that are in this level and definitely have a play in this level to get a feel for it. Do have a look at some of the collision options we've got set on these boxes um, so you can see uh, kind of the different collisions and how they affect the camera uh, because different ones will allow the camera to pass through or will allow the pawn to pass through. So some things to play with there. Um, and when you actually go to work with this project yourself, you may wish, depending on your use case, to right click on this and create a child class and then start your work in a child class to keep your blueprint super duper simple. Um, because most of this stuff here, there's a lot of this stuff you just won't ever need to change. And nearly all the options are exposed out as this options. And a lot of variables that you should never change have been correctly flagged as private. So they won't show up in your child class, which keeps it nice and clean and simple to use. Um, so that would be my kind of personal recommendation. You'll still need to go into this parent class to make little tweaks here and there. But if we just make a child class here, and go to our defaults, you can see we now just have all nice little set of options that you can just tweak very easily and a nice clean event graph to work from. So that's that really. Hope you find the um, tool useful. Thanks for watching.